Alright guys, so I got an, uh, another updated video here for you on the uh, Beta FPV Light Radio 2. I did a video uh, a few weeks back. Here's the original. And maybe more or less this is a prototype. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of these. I think there's maybe 20, 25 of these that were actually made. They had some limitations. You, I'll link that video down below and I'll explain the differences here between the prototype here and now the this is the actual production version. They're gone full production. This one, they uh, should be selling these um, in a bunch of places other than Beta FPV. I think they're selling them also at Race Day Quads. I'll link them down in the description. But cosmetically, very, very similar. In fact, almost the same. I think the same case. They changed the LED and the functions of how the LED works. And I'll just that here in a little bit. The switch looks a little bit different here. You can see like there's this sort of nut that holds the switch on over here. And then they have a more traditional um, uh, nut that holds on the switch on the newer version. This actually looks a lot nicer. So they changed the uh, power setup here. So instead of two 1S batteries, they have a regular 2S battery in the back here. And this plugs in via the balance lead, uh, as in the original. But now they have um, included the charging function in the radio so that you can just plug in your micro USB here and it will charge the battery so you don't have to take them out like you had to do on the prototype. So that was the that was my biggest complaint about the prototype is that you couldn't charge it, um, charge the batteries via the USB port. So they fixed that so I was pretty happy about that. They also changed the weight of the transmitter so I felt like this one was a little bit on the light side and it's a little bit heavier on the uh, full the new version. So the prototype weighed about 180 grams and they've now increased the weight to about 230 grams. They actually have weights, metal weights, that are inside the transmitter. So was, uh, if you open it up, it's pretty easy to get inside. Just obviously take the cover off, take the battery out. There's the six screws, take those off and the back comes off. There's metal weights that are inside the handle on the bottom here. So if you want to uh, increase the weight, if you feel like you want it to get make it heavier, you just, have, you just add some more weight here inside the handles and that will increase the um, weight of the transmitter. In terms of the gimbal feel, it's pretty much the same as before. Uh, you know, these are actual hobby grade gimbals, although they're obviously um, budget grade in terms of like costs. I mean, they're, not, they're no frill, they work. The spring tension is pretty decent. It's a little on the stiff side for me. I think some people will probably say this is pretty, too, it's actually too loose, but I like really, really loose gimbals. Um, the strings are okay. They're definitely less stiff than the uh, ones on the X-Lite. Um, so, you know, obviously it's all going to be about feel, right? And you may or may not like to feel these springs. I think that if you want to adjust the gimbal tension, you're going to have to change the springs out. I don't think there's a way to adjust the gimbal tension or the tension on the throttle, but I would say for the vast majority of people, this should be totally fine. I mean, this is a $40 transmitter, and it is really meant for flying whoops and small micros. This is going to be totally fine for that. Uh, switches are the same as before. You have a three-position switch here towards the top. And the bottom there, these are two position switches, and they feel pretty good. They're, they feel about the same as the originals. Now, in terms of the range, I didn't really do extensive range testing on the um, prototype or this one. There's a PCB antenna right here that is taped to the inside of the case. So obviously you want to point this towards your craft, and that's just going to give you the best range. So you don't want to be pointing it at the ground. That's, that's probably bad. So just make sure you're pointing that antenna at wherever you're flying, and you should have the best reception that way. Um, I would say anecdotally it's a little bit better than the original. I didn't really have any range issues with the original. I could fly anywhere in my house and most parks on the original and this one here, this, uh, the, you know, this is totally fine as well. Didn't feel like I had any fail safe problems with this one for most, you know, uh, situations. I should, you should be totally fine with this one, but keep do, do keep in mind that it is just a PCB antenna. It is on a micro FL connector to the actual transmitter part on inside so if you want to mod this and um, use like a, a micro FL2 SMA adapter you could probably drill a hole in here and put an actual antenna on here if you wanted to if you want to get more range I'm sure that's completely doable if uh, any of you guys are interested in some sort of a mod like that let me know and maybe I'll do that for a future video so in addition to the charging function of the micro USB port it has the same 
um, I guess joystick function as before. So this can you, you can use this for simulators. However, you may run into a driver issue. I did run into that one, the original as well. And um, basically, it puts a uh, you may have a problem where it actually installs the incorrect driver. You do have to go into your device. Um, I think it's under Windows settings under de the device manager and uh, change the um, actual driver to the basically the, ba the basic USB driver instead of I think it's trying to put in some sort of a um, joystick driver that isn't compatible with simulator. So if you run into that problem where you plug this in and it looks like it should be working but it doesn't show up in your simulator, just do the uh, driver switch out here that I've just shown here on the screen uh, in this video. So the audio jack is the same as before, trainer function, uh, if you wanted to connect this to a larger radio and use this uh, for it as a trainer, this actually will work. Just plug it in and it defaults into trainer mode automatically. As I mentioned earlier, the LED function is a little bit different. Before there was, you turn it on and there was no sounds or anything and eventually we turn blue, that means it's done loading and uh, it's not as bright as well. So I guess some people were a little bit confused how the button works but it's a little bit more clear now if you when you power it up you press and hold and you'll get uh, the vibration motor that's attached to the case here and the whole thing will shake and uh, also shakes as well when you have a um, uh, low telemetry or a low signal it gives you that same vibration just like the X-Lite does but when you press and hold to turn it on it'll vibrate twice and then uh, the light will turn green that means it's loading and then it'll flash, I think, between blue and purple. And the number of flashes indicates which mode you're in. So this radio, unlike the original, um, which had separate hardware for D16, the two different D16 modes and the D8 mode, which was kind of annoying, um, this has combined them all into the same firmware here on this particular model. So you can switch between the three different modes on this one. So there's basically a FreeSky version, which is D16 uh, FCC, D16 uh, LBT, or EU, and there is the D8 mode. So there's three modes you can switch between. But the number of purple flashes indicates which mode you're currently in. And it'll also show you that when you switch to modes, I'll show you that in a second. But in this case, my, my radio now is in D8 mode. It'll flash purple and blue three times. So I'm going to show you how it up. And it should flash purple and blue three times. And then it gets that you're in D8 mode. And to power off, you just press and hold and it'll vibrate once. And the light will turn off and that actually means it's actually off. So we'll turn back on here. Actually, so actually before I turn back on, I'll show you how to switch modes. So you have to do that no, without turning the radio on. So you, you basically press the bind button and hold it and power up and then that will switch to the next mode. So it cycles between um, D16 FCC, then it goes to D16 EU, and then it goes to D8. So it's now in D8, so I'll go to D16 FCC when I actually switch it here. Okay, so in order to switch the mode, I'm going to use this little Allen key. I'm going to hold down the bind button and let's make sure that's pressed in. And then while that's pressed in, you're going to power up the radio. So press and hold the power button and then let go of the power button. And then keep holding the bind button down. There we go. So it flashed uh, purple one time. So it went into D16 FCC mode. So I'm going to power that off again. So it should stay in that mode. I'm going to power it on. It should just flash purple once. There we go. So it's in D16 FCC mode. So we're going to switch to the next mode. All right. So I'll switch the mode one more time. Press and hold the bind button. Power it up. There we go. I flash purple twice, so it's in D16 EU mode. I'm going to put it back into D8 mode. Press and hold the bind button and power it up. There you go. And uh, flash purple three times, so we're now back into D8 mode. Okay, so in order to bind to your receivers, uh, you have to power the radio on first, and then you're gonna press and hold the bind button, and then it'll uh, uh, put the radio into bind mode, and you'll see the LED will start flashing. And 
and it goes purple and blue, and it will uh, be in that about, and be in, bind, in binding mode for about 10 seconds max. Okay, another thing that I mentioned in the previous video, but I'll mention again as well, is the setup button here. This will um, actually allow you to connect this to OpenTX. Obviously, there's no display or anything like that, but if you want to store different models, for example, this uh, does run a, um, I guess, a special version of OpenTX for this radio. It's like 2.24, I think, I believe. And if you press that button and go into the, um, uh, put, put the radio into OpenTX mode, it will, you can plug it in. It won't be, uh, it won't show up as a simulator joystick, but you'll actually uh, be able to connect to it via OpenTX Companion and download your models. But the main purpose of of uh, being able to connect it to OpenTX is able is actually either to set up the um, simulator function, and there's actually documentation on that as well. Um, you actually probably want to read the manual on that. So, um, there's, uh, there's actually a whole OpenTX page on how to set up your joystick for simulators, but out of the box you don't really need to change anything unless there's something specific you need to do for your simulator. Uh, I was able to use this without making any changes, so that's not really that important. But the main function of using OpenTX Companion is to trim the gimbals if they're not centered. Now mine happened to come totally centered out of the box. I didn't have to do any trimming. Obviously there's no trim buttons here so you can't do that with any buttons. You have to do it via OpenTX Companion if you have um, you know, a centering issue with your gimbals. I had that problem with the original and I had to go into OpenTX and correct that. Um, and if you go to the manual it'll explain how, how to do that if you had that problem. But I think that they've uh, solved the problem where you probably or very unlikely we'll need to be able to at uh, least go into that to make that correction because the gimbal should come centered from the factory. Okay, so I think that should cover everything on the radio and everything that's different. They've definitely uh, upped the game on this transmitter for $40, which you get is a really good value. And if you're considering getting into FPV and are looking for a transmitter um, uh, for your first FPV drone, this is definitely one you want to consider. As a starter, if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, it's you know it's perfectly fine. It's got hobby grade gimbals, um, decent range, uh, works completely well. You know, just fine for my, for purposes of, uh, uh, as a beginner pilot. As uh, internal charging, uh, good battery life. Um, it, it can basically bind with all the variety of free sky receivers out there, and you can switch to different modes. You can also bind to multiple models and. and because, you, because the, the, the transmitter ID is stored in the receiver, not in the radio. So you can actually uh, actually bound this to several D16 and D8 models at the same, you know, they're all bound at the same time. Obviously I'm not going to fly them all at the same time, but if you want are worried about, well, you, you can only bind to one at a time, you just have to bind it one time, and then the next time you turn it on, it'll keep that bind. So if you're worried about that, not a problem. You can have multiple models in this one as well. So yeah, for me, for $40, this is definitely the best um, budget beginner transmitter out there in terms of the features and functions. It, this is, there's actually nothing in this class, uh, at least for free sky. Obviously, there's a lot of fly sky options out there that are pretty cheap, but again, the receiver options on fly sky aren't as great as free sky. Anyway, I hope the video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.